hi students i hope all are fine so we were learning about dr b r ambedkar and we found that how he was invited to be part of the uh, drafting committee of the constitutions and how he was made as the chairman of the constitutions or of the drafting committee of the constitutions and we could also see the important say which he had over the over the congress or over uh, the constitutional assembly and so on all those things we said and we shall see we shall just continue from where we have stopped we shall see more about him how he becomes or how he transforms the indian society with his with his far sightedness all those things we'll see today okay so Jawaharlal Nehru chose Dr Ambedkar to be the first law minister of independent India this was a recognition of Dr Ambedkar's skills in the field of law and legislation and also a tribute to his vision of social justice a vision which was sought to be infused into the new indian polity but above all this was a tribute to the success of baba saheb dr ambedkar's own campaign campaigns against social injustice who could have dreamt that one born to a mahar family would one day become not only a law minister but a law maker and be hailed as a modern manu okay so what we see here in this paragraph is after the independence Jawaharlal Nehru okay we know that he was the first prime minister of independent india isn't it so he chose dr ambedkar to be the first law minister of independent india okay he chose dr ambedkar to be the first minister of the independent a law minister of the independent india why did he choose him because he had a great skill on legislation and the laws okay because that was the reason why he was selected to be part of the constitutional assembly and how he was made the chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution and not only that he was a person who gave more importance to social justice because he worked against social injustice he made campaigns okay he made campaigns against social injustice so he was a person who was born to a low class family okay but how he has strived to be in the upper part of the society that has to be uh, that has to be taken into account by us who learn about dr b r ambedkar he was born to a not that a higher class family but he rose up to the level of those people or he rose up to the highest level one of the highest levels of india independent india in the four decades and more since independence much progress has been achieved in providing equality of opportunities to the people members of the scheduled castes find doors which had been closed to them for centuries being opened no legal bars exist today for self expression or self advancement they are enrolling themselves in institutes of higher learning and entering public services they have come to occupy high offices of state both at the center and in the states judges ambassadors and governors have been born from their ranks and they have acquitted themselves creditably in all these positions of responsibility so what we see here see in this paragraph is okay we had a time when all the low class people were suppressed okay when there was a caste system and so all these low caste low class people were suppressed but after the independent era okay after four decades that is 40 years of the independence uh, 40 years from the independence now we see so much of progress happening in the in the indian uh, in the country okay in our country 
what are those what are those changes we have we speak of equality now equality of opportunities we means to say everyone is given equal opportunity so we can see it in our day to day life also and we have the members of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes they also receive certain benefits we have so much of a reservation and so on for them but not only for the reservation those people those belonging to lower class also they come up in life okay and we have uh, self expression self advancement no legal barriers are kept on these things okay and we have so many individuals like judges becoming judges ambassadors governors and so on from all these low caste or low class people okay means to say they are given the responsibility of the nation okay the positions of responsibility is given or are given to these people who ha who have come up from the low class okay so means to say that now this things now situations have changed and we have doors of opportunities opening for all these people who have who were once considered as low class and yet much remains to be done in the social plane the annual reports of the commissioner for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes list several violations of the law and several instances where notwithstanding the statute book members of the scheduled castes have been discriminated against baba saheb ambedkar's work will be truly complete only when social discrimination is completely eliminated from a society so we give much importance to the work of uh, dr b r ambedkar why because he has given so much of input in carrying out equality carrying out justice carrying out liberty to the common people to all the people of india and we could also see how people from low class coming up in the society but not in all the places that is what we see in this paragraph in this paragraph what we see is there are okay there are studies made on all these people like low class people and so on like scheduled caste scheduled tribes they have made studies and reports have been made and all these reports show that there are discriminations taking place there are violations taking place uh, against what has been prescribed okay that there should not be any violations but there are violations taking place against all these sh uh, scheduled scheduled caste people and scheduled tribe tribes people so what we need to see is dr ambedkar's work will truly be complete only when there is no discrimination absolutely whatsoever there should be liberty there should be equality there should not be any discrimination in the society only then we can say dr b r ambedkar's work is truly complete baba saheb ambedkar always stressed the importance of constitutional methods to achieve social objectives in an interesting observation he once described the methods of civil disobedience non cooperation and satyagraha as a grammar of anarchy the observation assumes importance in the context of public agitation in free india it is one thing to utilize these methods in a struggle against an alien power the right to rebellion is recognized against a government without people's consent be it alien or a national dictatorship but not in a democracy based on free and fair elections misdirected and volatile such agitations invariably result in the loss of lives and public property okay what we see here in this paragraph is 
we can see there are discriminations taking place though there should not be any discrimination taking place on the basis of uh, caste color religion nothing okay but we we have found that reports have showed that there are discriminations taking place but baba sahib he always insisted the importance of constitutional methods to achieve social objectives okay if we have any social objectives he could hold he he would hold on to constitutional methods what would the constitutions tell you to do in a particular situation so that's what that is how you need to attain certain objectives and it is said in an observing uh, in an interesting observation he once described the methods of uh, civil disobedience non cooperation and satyagraha as a grammar of anarchy okay what do you mean by anarchy anarchy means there is no order lawlessness so here he considers these three methods which were, which were used in order to send an alien force from indian land as a grammar of anarchy in india at present at present in the sense when there is no uh, no equality when there is no liberty when there is no social justice taking place in india so he considers these three things which once used in order to send an alien force away from india as a grammar of lawlessness or grammar of anarchy and he says okay we are a state we are a state where there is a elections are there democracy okay democracy should be properly utilized okay democracy should be properly utilized and there is no dictatorship means to say okay there is one leader and the leader would say you do this and without saying anything without saying any without having any discussion the subjects the people will have to do that it is not that democracy is not that that is what dr ambedkar is telling what does dr ambedkar say ambedkar says that okay you have to use or you have to utilize democracy properly if there is no proper there is no proper uh, means is a proper governance or if it if it is a misdirected governance there will be loss of people okay loss of lives and also loss of public property so that is what he says he says okay you have to utilize democracy properly if you do not utilize proper uh, utilize democracy properly what does have what will happen there will be loss of life because there will be agitations against the government and there will be loss of lives people will lose their lives and also there will be loss of public property means to say people will destroy the public property if there is no proper or if democracy is not properly used okay so that is sir uh, that is what we we have to learn for today's class we have certain questions based on the, the uh, on the class that we had today so there are six questions you can uh, just uh, read through these questions and write the answers for the first five questions okay write the answers for the first five questions six question we shall have a small discussion okay in the Uh, during the live session we shall have a small discussion for the sixth question for the so the first four uh, first five questions you can go through the uh, go through the class and uh, answer the sixth question we shall have a discussion i hope today's class is clear to you thank you and bye